Interesting with you um, today. Um, just a, a, a quick uh, background on, on who we are. I, my name is Dean Acosta. I'm the, the chairman for the Coalition for Space Exploration. And uh, I'm really, as I mentioned, really proud to introduce our new board of advisors, uh, part of a group that we have pulled together um, that uh, have a really impressive background. It shows the uh, importance of space exploration and the things um, that, that our diverse group uh, and the backgrounds that they have uh, will, will bring to our board and, and, and show that uh, um, we're really going to be doing some interesting um, um, outreach activities and things in the future. Um, <clears throat> First, let me tell you a little bit about the, the Coalition for Space Exploration and share our primary objectives. Uh, we're a group of space uh, industry businesses and advocacy groups that collaborate to educate and inform the public and key influencers uh, on the value and benefits of space exploration. Uh, we also work to ensure that the U.S. remains a leader in space, science, and technology key factors uh, that benefit every American, uh, strengthen our nation's economy, and maintain our national security. Uh, we met earlier today to review our plans uh, for the rest of the year and to begin to outline the next few years um, uh, for our organization. 2009 has already been an exciting year for the coalition. Uh, to date, one of our biggest highlights is a public opinion survey we conducted to better understand how the nation values space. Um, so some of you should have some of that information and, and we certainly encourage you to take a look at that. Um, we have, the, as I said, the flyers with the synopsis and the findings. Uh, we have three other research activities planned for the year, along with a host of public awareness and space policy communication initiatives. Um, so that's how our Board of Advisors will come to play um, in sharing uh, and helping us to, to reach out to, to the rest of, uh, of the country. So at the start of the year, we revitalized our advisory board and welcomed several new members. These folks include space experts, journalists, former political leaders, educators, and Gen Y representatives. The distinguished board members not only provide strategic counsel to the uh, coalition, but also speak out on important issues related to space exploration and NASA. So today and in the future, um, they will be available to you. They're, good, uh, they're a good resource and certainly can provide some insight, not only to the coalition, but on other initiatives that are going on in, in space exploration. And you should also have a copy of our press release. Um, you get, this is the, uh, you, you're getting the sneak preview. We're not gonna put out the press release tomorrow, so you get, um, you get the, uh, the early version. All right, so, uh, the scoop. So, uh, so enough of me talking, let me introduce uh, our new group. Just run um, out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> hold the bolt on. Oh, hold the bolt. Oops. Oh, this is kind of antiquated notion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now they're going to tweet, right? They already <laughs> tweeted it. It's done. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> so much for the breaking news. Uh, all right. So I want to introduce some of our groups. To my right, we have uh, Fred Gregory. Uh, Mr. Gregory is a. I guess I'm call you Fred, right? Fred is a, a former NASA astronaut. Oh, the honorable. The honorable. <laughs> <laughs> Research desk pilot, deputy administrator, and also was acting administrator for NASA. He's uh, currently managing director of aerospace and defense strategies at Lofeld Consulting Group in Alexandria, uh, where he leads the aerospace and defense strategy practice. To his right is Dr. Tom Jones. Dr. Jones is a former NASA astronaut who flew on four space shuttle missions. He's a scientist, pilot, and member of the NASA Advisory Council. Currently, Dr. Jones is an author, speaker, and consultant who splits his time between Houston and Virginia, um, just outside of Washington, D.C. I'm sure you've seen him on Fox News because he does a lot of the uh, uh, launch coverage for Fox News. Uh, to my left is Nick Lampson. Mr. Lampson is a former member of the U.S. House of Representatives from the 22nd Congressional District, uh, <clears throat> which includes Johnson Space Center. He served a key role on the Space Science Transportation Committee and was instrumental in legislation that generated positive results for NASA. He currently consults from his home base in Beaumont. And then to his left is, I think everybody knows, Miles O'Brien. Uh, Mr. O'Brien is a 26-year broadcast news veteran who worked for nearly 17 years as a correspondent, anchor, and producer for CNN based in Atlanta and New York, and at various times uh, serving as CNN's science, space, aviation, technology, and environment, uh, environmental uh, correspondent. All things geek. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's the best, right? He recently completed his first uh, live streaming webcast of STS-119 uh, launch in partnership with Space Flight Now and is currently working on a documentary with PBS titled Blueprint America, A Tale of Three Cities. 
So uh, as you can see um, by the background, we have a pretty distinguished group. And what I'd like to do right now is um, first hand it off for a, uh, some opening remarks from Fred, Tom. And the object of this exercise is to uh, fully inform the uh, citizens of the United States and, and, and world partners about the, the, the significance of what we are doing, what the space program is, what its benefits are. Uh, my personal agenda is to develop the value and worth of it such that when it is compared to other things that are very important uh, associated with the economy that we have and where the money goes, that it, it stands as one of the, of, of the top. Uh, I'm also interested in, in the space program because I believe that if it becomes vital and it has demonstrated value and worth, uh, then it becomes a, it's an incentive for a third grader to learn science and technology, engineering and math. And uh, it would be a incentive, but it would also encourage the third grade teacher to learn about those things too and have those discussions. And with the hope that this would be a third grader going home and talking to the parents, and this is kind of a grassroots uh, where it's third grader to parents uh, in order to gain and greater and greater support for these programs. So this is an incentive program as far as I'm concerned. But having flown in space, it's a lot of fun too. Uh, I don't know how you sell fun. <laughs> I agree that it's a lot of fun. It's a great privilege to have been at, in space. Uh, it was a dream of mine from uh, age 10 to someday try to become an astronaut and fly in space. And the United States offered me that opportunity because it had a very active and vigorous space program back in the 60s when I was growing up and on through the 80s and 90s when I became eligible to apply and, and finally succeed and after several <laughs> failures, finally succeed in getting selected to go into space. So I got to go to the space station, help construct that uh, great uh, machine, that laboratory up there in orbit now. And I've also been on research missions up for the shuttle that looked back at our own Earth. So like Fred, I would very much like to see that opportunity for young people to uh, head into space themselves and contribute to our exploration of the solar system and of our own Earth uh, be a continuing opportunity for younger generations. And certainly, at least, this country should offer those young people the same opportunity that I had uh, during the height of the space race back in the 60s. That's the mark of a country that's forward-looking, that's intent on making sure it's, it's producing the leaders, the technical people that we need to solve problems and lead uh, us in global economic competition. Um, from a scientific standpoint, I think what I take away, take away from working with this group is a chance to talk about what NASA does for our environment. I'm a planetary scientist. I've made my focus in research small bodies like asteroids and comets, but I'm very broadly interested in exploring the solar system. And there are many worlds that we study with our robot probes and, of course, with people, uh, the moon in the past, 40 years ago, and in the future, in, in the next 10 years. But our focus on the solar system has also give us, given us a greater understanding about our own world. And one of NASA's prime missions now is to use its fleet of Earth-observing spacecraft to bring hard numbers back to policymakers here on the ground about the changing state of our environment. And with, those, with that hard information, those facts, we can then make intelligent decisions about how to allocate the limited resources that we have in the coming years. We have important decisions to make about how to protect the environment, and NASA's job, I think, will be to provide key information to those policymakers. And on a, I guess on a more uh, fundamental level, one thing that NASA can do by harnessing space technology is to eliminate the threat of an asteroid ever running into our planet again. And uh, as a scientist who studies asteroids, I can think of no more fundamental reason for going into space and developing our skills than to have the knowledge and the capability to protect the planet from a, cat a catastrophe that will occur someday in the future. Not imminently, but it's prudent to have an insurance policy. As my friend Rusty Schweikert says, we're driving around the solar system uninsured. <laughs>